satyrs into Ashiok to completely clear the Ashiok this turn. Um, or he would risk losing his Ojitai. He could either lose his Ojitai and still kill Ashiok or just let the Ashiok die. So Carter's going to plus. He's going to have five total. Play Nissa World Waker. That's when we haven't seen this match. Um, I suppose this is because it's game two. He's going to animate force, make it a 4-4 creature. And I assume he's going to get busy. Michael shuffling his hand while Carter decides what to do for the rest of his turn. Is he going to attack? Is he going to set back on a Thunderbreak Regent blocker with two Planeswalkers that have to be answered? No. He's going to get in there with the 4-4 land and the 4-4 Thunderbreak, not let Michael get a value block on the Seder uh, and eat 8 go to 7. He's going to more than likely just eat 8 here and go to 7. No, he decides to block the Ojitai and the Thunderbreak. I, that's a pretty good block for Michael, honestly. Uh, it slows it down a little bit, uh, but now he has to draw a Perilous Vault, I believe, to stabilize. And that was not what he saw. He saw a land. He's going to scry. Thinking about it, he has a Silimgar Scorn, a Thought Seize, and a, another Silimgar Scorn. So it looks like this is going to about be the end for Michael. He can put a carry added in play, which isn't the best. He can block uh, the 4-4. Four, four. But that's the problem is Carter's going to put six more toughness, or six more power onto the board next turn, let alone whatever he has in his hand. Uh, if he happens to have a Stormbreath Dragon... That would be incredibly great for Carter. Carter thinks about his turn. I'm going to try to get uh, the winner of this match over here to join me so it's not... Uh... <laughs> Looks like uh, Old Acre from the chat uh, comments on the basic lands and yeah Michael always uses his originals if he can he uh, has many alpha and beta basic lands along with as you can see the original apocalypse caves of Koilos and Carter is borrowing Matt's basic lands actually the APAC lands Mount Fuji Mountain and I believe it was Jap a Japanese forest. I, I could be wrong on what country the forest comes from, but it's the one with the little hut in the background. Carter has yet to activate either of his planeswalkers. Doing some quick math, it looks like. Going to plus Nyssa, making... Mountain, yes, Mountain, a 4-4 four, four creature. What? <laughs> they use the poison die. Oh, I guess all the other die have been used. Xenoghost is still yet to activate. So Carter's going to have two four fours and at least one Seder. You could possibly have two Seders. If he swings all out, Michael could, with a second Seder, Michael will block the carry out on a 4-4 to absorb damage. Take eight, go to three. Um, Carter's not going to use Xenagos for that, actually. Looks like he has something else up his sleeve. Maybe an Arbor Colossus. Michael's choosing who to block with his carry added. Oh, he could also just have a Crater's Clause for lethal. Uh, in which case, with Xenoghost, it would definitely be lethal. Uh, Karyad is going to block the Seder, and he's going to go to three. And Carter... is going to... maybe not use Xenoghost. Nope. There it is. 
Uh, he's going to add three mana to his mana pool and cast at a fourth. Cast Thunderbreak Regent. Into Thoughtseize, Silumgar Scorn, Silumgar Scorn. Michael is going to scorn it. Leaving Carter with an or leaving Michael with enough to Spirit Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Uh, he only has one blue up, so he can't uh, activate his other Silumgar Scorn in hand. Carter's gonna let that resolve go to twenty. And with two mana, is he going to be able to cast the Crater's Claws for one with <laughs> with Ferocious to make it three? And Michael doesn't have the secondary blue to cast the other Salimgar Scorn. So that was a pretty interesting way to finish a match. Uh, we have Carter Newman as the winner of this. Um... Pretty awesome uh, games of Magic. That was an interesting way to win. Uh, it's always good to see Crater's Claws and Crater's Claws be the win conditions. I'm going to do a quick on sideboard. He, of course, sided in Mob Rule. And Michael sided in Learn from the Past, which was an interesting card to bring in. Uh, it must have, as I believe Higgins said in the chat, it was probably a card that's just a cantrip at worst that you can put in and... Uh, you know, over a, an absolute dead card. Um, so it's a utility type card, I guess. You really want it against. I'm not sure, honestly. I'm, I'm not sure I even like it in the control mirrors. I feel like you want cards in your graveyard to cast your dig through times more. That was different. I wasn't expecting that to kick on. Uh, I'm going to try to get Carter to come over and talk with us for a little bit. But that was game one, and Carter Newman took down Michael. Carter was playing Red Green Dragons, and Michael playing Esper Dragons. And yeah, Michael does have Dissipates in his sideboard, it looks like. Or in his main deck. <laughs> and he sided those out. I like that call. Uh, if he hadn't any Dissolves main, there's a chance I would have cut one or two of those. But other than that, Carter played a great game. Michael did too. It's just Michael got stuck a little bit. And he got it the second game, though, when he led uh, turn three Ashiok and was able to quickly plus and plus and plus to uh, get it out of to get out of hand real quickly. All right, well, they're packing up. I'm going to switch the camera back. Let's see. Carter should be over here in a minute. So while we wait for him... Gonna hang out with some Garrick again. Uh, so yeah, round two should be up in, if I had to guess, probably another 15 minutes or so. Uh, so right now we're just gonna talk and cruise and see what Carter liked about his deck and uh, sideboard options and stuff like that. So I'm gonna wait on him to get over here. Uh, they told him over there to uh, head on over. Yeah, here he is. Bring a chair, uh, if you would. I didn't bring one in here. It's like, let me go help him. Did you bring your deck by chance? Uh, no, do you want me to grab it? No, that's fine. Alright. Yes, Carter, the winner from the last match. What did you uh, side in and what did you side out? Like, I couldn't figure it out. Um, so I side out my four Draconic Wars, and game two I side out one of my Sylvan Carry Addits. I felt like Sylvan Carry was going to be a little too slow in game two. Yeah, I was going to flood out. My plan was to go a little longer. Okay. Uh, I felt like the Atarka would actually be relevant. Game three, I sided back into carry out of. I wanted to get a little aggressive, just kind of abuse that I'm on the play. Side back out the Atarka. Yeah. Super it uh, expensive. I uh, me and Hig Higgins is in the group chat. He was confused, and it made me think why you didn't uh, play Atarka into the untapped Ojitai, and then untapped Ojitai is hexproof. Yeah, untapped, and we realized, yeah, hexproof. and we were like, why didn't he do that? That makes sense now. Uh. But yeah, that was pretty sweet. Sweet way to win. Crater's Claws twice. It's always fun. Yeah, the uh, card is very good. 
Yeah. Top decks are real. <laughs> oh, did you top deck it in the last game? I don't know. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> I'm like, pretty I sure wanna, I did. If I did, I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to admit it. Um, Michael uh, had another. I don't know if you saw his hand at the end. He had another Silimgar Scorn, and he wasn't able to. He didn't have double. Scorn. He didn't have double blue up. That's the reason yeah. I went for the curse call. I saw that he didn't have the second blue up, and if he has negate. He has it. If he has a negate and he sighted in against Rick Green Dragons, yeah. there might be a problem. I mean, it hits I, I would have sighted in, but hey, you never know. Yeah. I mean, the deck generally brings in a lot of Planeswalkers, so there could be an argument made for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess that's true. You have Nissa and Xenagos. Like, you saw in that game, <laughs> you landed one, yeah. got unchecked, landed the other, and you won. Uh, yeah. yeah, you would have won on the back of those two cards without playing another card, period. But... I'm in, I'm honestly surprised that he uh, Silengar scorned the Thunderbreak region. That was a little weird. Well, he was at three life, and in his main way to kill it is going to be a Hero's Downfall or Ultimate Price. And if he targets it, he's going to take three damage from right. Thunderbreak's ability. Um, he would have to go something along the lines of Crux of Fate into Faltong Invocation, and with I, the dragon that he didn't with, have. Oh well, he doesn't need the dragon since it sacrifices. He can just Crux of well, Fate, name yeah. non-dragons. Um, but he would have already cast one of those two cards. So there's no way he can just draw two cards like that unless he had to dig through time, and I forced the action by playing the Thunder Brick. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, uh... How was it over there? Oh, it's, it's great over there. I mean, I love... I've been coming down here for years. Oh, that's not what I was talking about, but oh. that's, pretty, that's pretty funny. Got to skip down a little bit. You got the hometown blue. Yeah. Got the blue dice on the table. Blue water or something. Blue's nice. I wish I was playing it tonight. Blue is nice. Oh, man. I was actually uh, expecting Michael to play green-white. Because that's the last time he was down here. I think that's the deck he was playing. So, But with Michael, it's always a toss-up. He has every card in standard. Yeah, so he, has everything. he can play any deck in standard that he wants. Yeah. Uh, He's been playing Esper Dragons recently. And I was like, well, I'm... That hand's not terrible. The game one hand, it was very slow, but I felt like he was going to be on some sort of Abzan or Esper Dragons. He leans towards those mid-range and control mm -hmm. decks. Uh, so that hand's very good. I had two Havens, I had three Threats. Pretty much a dream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah you definitely had that game completely. The uh, second game, though, that, that turn three Ashiok unchecked. Like, Planeswalkers, when they're unchecked, are very unfair cards. Oh, yeah. Like, like most, Yuck, most of them, anyways. Ashiok was absurd. I mean, game two, he just landed on three after Salam scorning my Silver Carry, which seems suspect, but then it made sense after he played Ashiok. Yeah. Uh, you yeah, generally he, just want to lock up the game. He would have gave you the uh, initiative at that point. It was like you would have been playing first in that game yeah. if he would have let it resolve. And at that point, playing behind with Ashiok is... Obviously way worse than playing ahead with Ashiok. Yeah, game three, I just never attacked Ashiok. I mean, granted, he didn't hit any creatures besides the lonely Manadors that you never want to bring out with Ashiok. Mm. But I was still just able to get in there. Let's check out the chat. See, we got Caudle, <laughs> Curtis, Higgins, Cody, and Dreamcaster12. Hmm... Dreamcaster 12. I am Carter the Illuminati. Oldman. All right, Higgins. <laughs> Carter Oldman. That's your new name. Uh, yeah, like I said, this guy has done ridiculous at tournaments recently. Uh, so look out for this guy. You'll see him at some Grand Prix and Opens and pre-PTQs, Grand Prix stuff like that. So yeah, I'll, pre I'll be at pretty much all the IQs, PPTQs here. Yeah, we definitely do them a lot here. Uh, usually there's an IQ a month. Uh, the next one we took June off. Uh, we'll be back July 18th with a pro t preliminary Pro Tour qualifier, Star City Games Invitational qualifier mixed together. It's going to start at noon. Uh, we'll be open at 10 a.m. that day. Uh, it's going to be, I believe, 30 to enter. It might be 25 if you play on our Friday Night Magic the night before. Um, yeah, so we're going to have a blast here coming up. We're going to have a lot of streams in between then, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Matt says there's one match left. So after that match ends, you'll probably have to head over. I'm sure he'll send me a text saying it's time I'll be back to go. Over. Yeah. Who's butt? You can't say butt. You can't say butt on Twitch. It's not very nice. That's uh, mildly racist, actually. Jeez, butt. Oh no, I said it. I can't say it on Twitch. No. You broke the rule, man. I broke the rule. Uh, it's. 
It's not. It's rules are made to be broken. I've heard. And at least.